Hi guys, so today I'm going to talk to you about what it's like being an adult with ADHD. For those of you who don't know what it is, it is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. It's kind of a completely like, it's a almost rude terminology for something that is basically just describing the way my brain works. It works differently than those who do not have ADHD in that I don't get to really pick what I focus on, but I can focus. So saying it's attention deficit is really a misnomer because we do, we can pay attention and we do pay attention, but we can't always control when and for how long we do pay attention. So things like medication really can help in increasing our ability to focus on everyday tasks or to a conversation or especially in the school age years to the teacher. Um, and I was diagnosed back when I was in, I believe, second or third grade. So it was very uncommon still for girls to be diagnosed. It was still generally thought to be something that only affected boys, and also something that would go away with puberty. Now we know it's something that does not ever go away, but there are some of those people who can learn to manage their symptoms and live productive, successful lives without any aid of medication or something or anything like that basically so while it might seem as though it's gone away it really never does go away it's just a matter of being able to control the symptoms and when I say symptoms I'm talking about the ones that you don't want such as not being able to pay attention um, or being impulsive and talking out of turn or not thinking before you say something coming off rude when you're trying to just say something really nice or talking out of turn, talking over somebody, or even, you know, fiddling around with something when you should be paying attention. Uh, again, it's really difficult when you're in your school years because you have to sit there for hours at a time paying attention to a teacher and when you can't focus, you can't absorb the information, and then when you go home at the end of the day and you're expected to do this homework, it becomes that much more difficult to do because you don't fully understand the homework. Or you just have even less focus to get it done. Um, most people with ADHD are very smart and creative. I would be one of those creative people. I have this impulsive need to create or to draw or to just imagine stories in my head and I get caught up in my own little world of imagination and that's probably why it seems like it could be such a disabling disorder because if you're caught up in your own head all the time you can't pay attention to the real world and if you're speaking out of turn, you can't build real connections with people. And so here I am, an adult. I'm finishing up my college degree, but I still have more school to do because I've decided I want to become a teacher. I want to be there for those kids that don't necessarily have a supportive structure at home or haven't had teachers that are willing to work with the individual students or the families and they need somebody there to show them that they can do it. Whether or not they have ADHD or some other learning disability or even if they just come from a lower income neighborhood and their parents just aren't home to help them with homework because they're off making money.
to pay for food. Um, or any situation. I mean, I, I was born and raised in a middle class family. So I had parents who were there, but they didn't understand really what it meant to have ADHD because there wasn't a lot of literature out there when I was growing up. And as I got older, there was more and more stuff out there to read and more things that helped my parents understand what really was going on inside my head. Because when they'd be like, well, just pay attention more. And I'd say, you know, I can't. It wasn't that I wasn't trying. And I was always told, you know, just try harder. All you need to do is try harder. But it's not a matter of trying. It's not a matter of willpower. It is a matter of brain function. So I've been on medication for most of my years with the diagnosis. And I switched from being on Adderall to this new newer medication called Vyvanse. It's still a stimulant, but I was having a lot of trouble in that transition from high school to college. Um, I started dealing with a lot of anxiety and that was leading to depression. Um, and I was I've always struggled with a form of dyslexia that is auditory processing. So reading and even just any languages in general are harder for me to process. Uh, so, you know, I struggled with, with that keeping up in school because of that. I was always a slower reader. I still am a slow reader. And in fact, most of the time I don't actually end up finishing books that I start. Not because I'm not interested in the book but because I just don't have the attention to pay to, to finish reading. I don't have that attention span or I get distracted with another book that seems to interest me or another project. Um, and it really helps having a, a strong support system. But if you don't have that, you don't necessarily know where to start. And when I left for college, I left the comfort of my home and my parents, who were, had always been supportive, even if they didn't understand what was going on, they always tried. And so I left that home environment and I had to do it for myself. And that's something that every or high school graduate going to college or in, you know anybody around 18 has to, to do is transition from being a child in the home to an adult dealing with their own things. But it can be a lot harder if you've got secondary things such as ADHD. So I just, I wasn't prepared and my years were very up and down. So I want to kind of be here on this, I want to create a channel that is there to support anybody who's at that transitional age from either whether it's from middle school to high school or from high school to college or at the point I'm at right now, which is I'm trying to finish up my college degree and then get my teaching credentials. So that's another big transition, even though it's still in school. It's not the same school. It's not the same environment. It's a totally different thing for me. And also the transition into the, the job world. I have had jobs before, so that's not unusual, but fully supporting myself and building a career out of those jobs is something new. And again, everybody has to go through this some point in their life. And so even if you don't have ADHD, it can be difficult. So I'm here for you guys. Um, and I'm telling you my story. And um, right now, I'm also working on losing some weight. I, while I was in school, uh, I wasn't dealing with the anxiety and, and uh, depression that started because I was just struggling so hard to stay in school. I've been on academic probation enough times that... If I had been on it one more time, I would have been kicked out of school. And I don't know what I would have done because that would have been just such a huge upset for me and totally thrown off my plans. And that's another issue is bouncing back from any upsets in life. And 
it's, a, it's hard for anybody to change their life plans and to adjust to a new situation. But when you feel completely out of control or having no control with your life and no idea where you want to go is especially hard and not understanding really what's going on in your head it makes it even harder so right now I am reading a book called where is it I'm reading this book called delivered from distraction and I'm actually able to read it so for any of you guys who have ADHD and are kind of confused on what's going on in your head or maybe you know somebody with it and are really you want to help them it would be a, it's a really great book because I don't know first thing it said was it's okay if you don't finish the book most people with ADHD have a hard time finishing books and the doctor who wrote this book actually refers to it as ADD attention deficit disorder because back when I was diagnosed they didn't have the hyperactivity as part of it and this is a doctor who uh, kind of was was in the process of, of studying ADD back before it was just all encompassing ADHD and again ADHD is different for everybody I don't necessarily have hyperactivity so I would I'm fine with just calling it ADD but there are definitely those people out there who have the hyperactivity and that really affects you more as a child than it does in your adult years just because you have to learn to be patient and calm yourself down to even get through childhood I mean it's it's just one of those things but from what I'm reading I'm being reminded of all the positive aspects of having ADHD and for me it's very much creativity and a passion for it and for being creative and Working with kids is another thing that I really realize I'm passionate about. And as an adult, I realize I have to focus on those things. I have to focus on the things that I'm passionate about. And maybe Cal Poly wasn't the best choice of colleges for me to go to for developing my creativity. And because, and things like that, because it's really focused on, especially in the art department, it's really focused on getting you out into the job world, which is amazing. It's great. But that's not the side of art that I've always been drawn to. I don't like the business side. And I'm studying photography. I still have one quarter left, but I am back in Sacramento for the semester uh, to take classes that I'm really interested in taking uh, at the JC. Sacramento has some really great art classes available, and I had art electives that I needed to take as a art major, and I decided I was going to take them here in Sacramento because that was really what was going to make me happiest. Sure, I have to move home and live with my parents for a little longer, something I never wanted to do. In fact, I've been in San Luis Obispo for the last five years, only went home for a vacation. And so it's a totally strange adjustment for me, but I'm making it, I'm doing it, um, and I'm coming up with a new routine. And that's a big thing. I have to have a routine, and I have to write it down, because if I don't write it down, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I don't know where to start my day. And then I end up spending hours just trying to think of what to do first. And that's not productive. You can waste a whole day just trying to figure out how to start it with ADHD because just your brain's so everywhere. But I love that because I come up with some really great creative ideas at the same time. So I'm now working on developing that and rediscovering it because when you start getting depressed, you forget about all the things you're good at. And 
for me, I also started overeating. So I gained about 50 or 60 pounds more than I should have over the course of five years. And it really was, I, the last 25 pounds was in the last year and a half or two. So I'm, I need to, to get myself back to a happy place. And I'm, I'd have to say I'm already doing it and I'm so proud of myself. And that's something I want anybody out there who's struggling to take a step back and find something that they can be proud of because I didn't do that. I was afraid to do that. I was afraid to be happy because I wasn't being successful as I knew I could, as successful as I knew I could be. And that's something that you're constantly told too. I was constantly told, you know, you have so much potential to the point where that word potential, I hate that word. That word is an evil word for me because when you hear you have so much potential, you could do so much if you just work harder or if you just do this. And you know that you have that ability. You know you're smarter than what you're doing or than what you're achieving. You don't want to constantly be hearing you have the potential to do better. It just, it feels like you're being put down. And even though that's not the reality and people are just saying that because they're trying to motivate you, it's not a matter of motivation. It's a matter of working with your brain. And so that's, I guess, where I'm going to start and I'm going to leave it for today. I hope this was a good introduction. I will go in into more depth uh, and detail on my own journey and uh, keep you guys posted. And if anybody has any questions or wants to know how I made it through uh, the ups and downs and where, you know, and, and basically if you just have anything you want to talk to me about, I'm here. I want to be there for anybody else who's struggling because it, it always makes it easier when you have somebody else you can share your story with. So feel free to reach out to me and ask me any questions you want or tell me anything, you know, give me your story. How did you push through hard times in your life? Or are you starting your journey just like I am? Uh, yeah, so I will keep you guys updated. I'm off to go to the gym now. So something I really don't like doing is really hard for me to do consistently, but I've been doing it consistently for a few weeks now. And I'm that's something I have to be proud of, the little things. Find a little thing that you can do and be proud of it. And it's that's the you have to start somewhere. So good luck to you guys. Bye.